Second speaker in this slot is uh, Michel de Ric. Uh, and uh, Michel is from uh, uh, Jean de Noul uh, in uh, uh, Belgium. And I think we'll hear um, an interesting corollary to uh, what Philippe has just been uh, discussing, uh, discussing, because uh, uh, Michel is going to talk about the emissions catch-22 for LNG. Michel. Good afternoon, everybody. So, I'm Michel Dreck. I'm in charge of uh, emissions. Uh, fuel and lips in the company, so fuels, emissions, it's quite related to each other. So let's start on some uh, challenges we have. So since I'm in emissions and fuel, you will understand I'm rather on the technical side of this story. So I will try to uh, find some options we have uh, from a technical point of view. How we can reduce our CO2 emissions uh, with ships, the use of fossil fuels. Um, three points. I'm not going to discuss anything about uh, operational optimization. It's uh, uh, rather on the technical side, like I said. So we have to see what we can do on the creation of energy on board. So how, which engines we use, which type of fuel we have heard already. Uh, so many uh, fuel options, uh, renewables, uh, LNG. Um, so, on, and then the next thing we can do, of course, is increase the efficiency. Uh, you can also hear that in other presentations, efficiency, raise the efficiency on board. Uh, how can we do that? Um, waste, uh, energy waste recovery, that's one of the options. Um, there are many things we can do on board of a ship. I think there is still room to improve. Um, so reduce consumption on board. And then the last thing uh, from a technical point, that's uh, when you design a new ship, uh, you should go for the, the last uh, state of the art and the developments of uh, in marine development. So yeah. So let's focus now uh, maybe on this one. Um, how do we create uh, uh, electrical energy on board, uh, starting from fossil fuel. Fossil fuel, or can it be from uh, bio-origin? That's uh, discussable. So this is the subject of this Congress, of course. Uh, what is at stake with the uh, emissions? Um, maybe I have to clarify a bit. Um, two things, so the greenhouse gases, You've seen another presentation, so methane, uh, some NOx who have an impact on the climate, and of course the CO2 that everybody knows. That is uh, greenhouse gases. So another thing is pollutants. Uh, when you come in uh, urban areas with vessels, uh, you don't want to pollute the area. As a dredging company, we are a lot in urban areas, so we do have an impact on the public health. So the air quality, let's say pollutants, air quality, we have to distinct those both very good, greenhouse gases and pollutants. So IMO is, for example, focusing on the NOx, the SOx, and that's about it. They are not saying anything for the time being on particle matters, CO or hydrocarbons, which come out of your exhaust. So there are different options. Um, we have heard in the previous presentation that's a choice for LNG, be it from uh, bio or not. You can choose for uh, mineral oil, or you can maybe, but that's still in a very piloting phase for the time being, uh, use hydrogen, methanol, there are a few projects. We have been studying all the options, and all the options were open, but at the end we came for marine gas oil uh, with an after treatment in the system. So, what is the advantage for the after treatment? It's mainly on the pollutants. So, keep uh, taking care of the urban area uh, we are working in. So, we are working on the NOx. 
The SOX for us is depending on the fuel we are uh, taking. Particle matter we can handle, CO we can handle, hydrocarbons we can handle. And indirectly, because we choose for uh, after treatment, actually we are also reducing our CO2 emission. So for our ships that are seagoing vessels, of course, um, IMO Tier 3 for the time being is the most uh, stringent uh, regulation we have. So if you take a Tier 3 engine running on mineral oil, uh, he will be optimized, this engine, for use of, uh, for the emission reduction of NOx. So this means that actually you have a very good engine for the NOx, but for the CO2 it will not be optimal. It will not be a very efficient engine. Why? Because you always have that NOx, uh, which you have to keep on a low level. So with the after treatment, we don't have to be worried too much about the NOx, so we can choose a fuel optimized engine, an old fashioned, very efficient engine. Any NOx coming out, we are treating with our um, SCR system, which we have here. There we are reducing our NOx. So, as I said, most of the uh, uh, pollutants are not regulated in IMO. Other pollutants, the particle matter, so we installed also particle matter filter. That was our choice. But what do we have to do? We didn't know where to end. IMO tier 3 is a bit... Um, if you choose, for example, an LNG option, you only have your IMO tier 3 who is uh, regulating you. So we were a bit worried. So if we choose LNG, we had a kind of feeling that there comes something like a free lunch. I mean, emissions of the particle matters, it's very good, you know. It comes, comes for free if you, you choose for that option. We chose a different approach. We checked which regulation we could use for building our vessels. This is the latest uh, European regulation for inland waterways, which was uh, voted last year and is much more stringent than uh, an IMO Tier 3 engine. So this is uh, the regulation we have used to build our vessels. So uh, you can see uh, how the limits are on particle matter, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, it's regulated. If you check, check in IMO Tier 3, there is nothing. You can promise whatever you like, there is nothing. Another thing for the Euro Stage 5, which is, was voted, is that they also, for the inland waterway uh, navigation, they allowed also a use of LNG. It was voted at the same time. Surprisingly, the Euronorm allows methane slip. They allow methane slip for six grams per kilowatt extra on a diesel engine. This is one who is regulated. IMO, there is no regulation. What happens if I check the energy content of each fuel and look to the greenhouse gases footprint? If I stick to the regulation, suddenly you see that LNG, COT, CO2 footprint, or the greenhouse gas footprint is even worse than heavy fuel. So, regulation is important. We use that one, we stayed on mineral oil. This is another study, which is, I think, coming from the same, giving the well to wake uh, CO2 uh, or carbon footprint for uh, different uh, fuels. Now, okay, all these things, that are the references where we take our uh, info from if you want to see or have some deeper view in how we come to these conclusions. You can use this as a reference. Thank you.